Now in order to explain this topic easily, I'm going to draw a simple graph. So on the horizontal axis we have the time, on the vertical axis we have the output voltage, whereby the, the top part is positive voltage and the lower part is a negative voltage. A conventional DC power source would have a stable, uh, normally positive DC output voltage, which doesn't really fluctuate over time. And an AC alternating current power source would have a voltage that fluctuates over time in a beautiful sinus waveform. Now I want to point out two different things in the graph. The first one is the output voltage. So as you have the sinus waveform, then the amplitude, so the height of the wave at the highest point, this is typically your operating voltage of an AC power source. Now you might have also heard about the frequency of an AC power source. So this refers to the amount of times per second whereby the sinus wave changes polarity. So normally you have a 50 or 60 hertz uh, frequency. So this means that 50 or 60 times per second, this waveform changes polarity. Another important aspect of an inverter is the overall efficiency of the inverter. So the efficiency of the inverter refers to the ability with which the inverter converts the energy supplied in DC format towards the output in AC. So a theoretical 100% efficient inverter would take all of the power from the DC source and convert all of that without any heat loss, any energy loss into an AC output. Now this 100% theoretical efficient inverter doesn't exist, but normally they range somewhere between 80 and 99% efficiency. The last important feature I want to explain about inverters is the term of the total harmonic distortion of the waveform. Total harmonic distortion or THD. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of off-grid energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. So if you're connected to the power grid, you'll get a perfect sinus wave output, something like this. So if you're connected to the grid, then the electricity will look something like this. Now an inverter will try to establish this as well, but it will always fail in doing that. An inverter is not able to get your perfect waveform like this. Instead, it will try to mimic the waveform, but it will actually give you a bit of a, a jumpy kind of rectangular or stepwise kind of waveform output, which, you know, depending on which inverter you have, it might resemble the normal sinus waveform that we want to get out of it, but it will always be a little bit different. Now, the, the extent to which the output from the inverter the, the steppy blocky kind of output from the inverter um, differs from the perfect waveform, the extent to that is the total harmonic distortion. So the closer the output of your inverter resembles the waveform, the lower the total harmonic distortion is. So the lower the THD, the better. Now I think that's all you need to know about the basics, so let's start to uh, dig into the subtopics of the inverter uh, chapter.